Hello, my name is Brianna Welch, and we are going to take a look at Pixton today. Let me get it started here. Now, Pixton is an online comic creator, so the video kind of intros it pretty well for us. I'm going to go ahead and get that started. These days, every teacher has the same struggle. How to inspire and motivate students to learn in a world full of digital distractions. Our solution is to give students a way to express themselves through comics. By transforming a medium already familiar to students into a powerful visual writing tool, Pixin for Schools brings fun and creativity back into learning. With nothing more than a web browser, students can immediately start designing flexible characters, giving them expression, and moving them into any pose using Pixton's intuitive click-and-drag interface. They can style text in dynamic speech bubbles, customize props, and compose reusable backgrounds, even upload images and sound. They can vary the length and layout of each comic. The possibilities are infinite. While enjoying the immersive interactivity of Pixin for Schools, students hone critical skills, such as how to convey an idea concisely, how to tell a story in a logical sequence, how to communicate and collaborate with others. Comics can be printed, downloaded, embedded, and shared on the web, easily included in student publications, websites, and multimedia projects. All this happens within a private, structured environment moderated by the teacher. Setup is easy. Students can be added with or without email, and they're organized into groups or classrooms. All right, so that was just a really brief intro into Pixton. I'm going to show you so much more, so stay tuned here. Um, a little background on Pixton. Uh, it was actually created in 2008 out of the home of Clive and Dana Goodenson. Now they're from Parsville in the British Columbia of Canada. I'm going to show you. This is their online profile here on Pixton. So nice little couple. They are married. Kind of fun. They both wanted to create a collaborative experience for people to share some ideas and their stories. And they chose comics as the, the means for getting that across. Now their background is kind of neat. Clive's background is in computer programming, while Dina's is in graphic design. So Pixton truly is the combination of both of their talents. So you can see they've won several awards for their website, Pixton. So they have done quite well for themselves, and it is really a neat tool for education. Now, some of the things you can do with Pixton as a teacher uh, is have your students make comic strips, storyboards, graphic novels, um, character maps, mind maps, plot diagrams, timelines, posters, uh, and even a photo story. So really just a ton of things packed into one website. Now, how is this being used in education? A lot of language arts teachers, reading teachers, um, are using Pixton as a means for teaching dialogue and teaching sequency, and just like in the video, teaching concise points, concise uh, actions in, in order. So here you can kind of see example of this was from a, a class where here they, they read a book and they had their students make a scene from that book. So I'm going to show you how I would use this in my own class as an art teacher. I'm going to use it mostly in a multimedia class, mostly for comic storyboarding. Uh, and storyboarding is, is laying out a story and using, uh, using drawing as a means to uh, tell that story. So here we are. This is my handout that the kids are going to see to use Pixton. Uh, the handout is for getting them set up with an account. So they're going to go to Pixton.com. They're going to follow these instructions to get set up. Now, their actual assignment is on Pixton. This is just kind of the means of getting them going. They're going to follow the photos or follow the directions here. 
uh, signing up, circling that they're a student. Now they're going to have a code to follow that I will provide for them in an email. They'll be entering that code. And then once they're logged in, they're going to be asked to do some things. Now I have some instructions here, but it's easier to show you. So I'm going to come up here to my, let's see, I'm going to log out and go back into my student profile. That was my teaching profile. So if I'm logging in as a student, I log in here. Now I have already followed the instructions, we'll say. My name is student BW. Now I've also done part of the first part of the assignment was to create an avatar. So I've already created an avatar for student BW. Uh, and now my second assignment, if I click in here, this is their first assignment was to create a comic. So their comic is already in progress. Uh, they've got it going here. This is what the students is going to, they're going to see. They're able to go and finish making that comic. Now I'm going to log out and show you what the teacher sees. All right, so I'm going to log back into my teacher profile. You can log in with Google. Now my teacher profile is a temporary trial uh, to, to show you this, but uh, most schools do have a license or can buy a license for this class. To use for their classes. So here is my here's my assignment that the students are going to look at. I'll show you what they saw when they first opened it. I have some instructions for them. I say using the skills we've learned about storyboards and dialogue, create your own online comic strip. Now they have a couple different directions. Use some characters, have a conversation, choose a setting that relates to their life. Uh, and I have attached a comic that I made as an example. So here is the one I made. Now this was from uh, a real life scenario that I found myself in getting lost in the Badlands a couple summers ago. So I ended up being a little silly, but that's okay. Comics are sometimes silly or if they're a graphic novel can be a little serious. Uh, so they're going to look at this and then, and then create their own. Now, if I was the student creating my own, I would have clicked they're going to have an option that says create a comic. Now my student had already started creating a comic and they were working on it, uh, but it's pretty self-explanatory for them. Um, I'm going to show you the rest of this from the teacher's perspective, just to kind of give you an overview of what you can do with Pixton. Um, up here in our bar, you can see some of the options of what we have. So in my own creations, I can take a like, I can take a look, excuse me, at the comics that I've started creating, um, or can make some more of my own. Uh, I have, I can create more characters, um, link my avatar, and then I can also link books that maybe we followed along with to start working on our comics. Now my people is going to be my students, other teachers that I have followed. Um, my activities are going to be in here. This is also where I create my activities. So a next assignment for my students. Um, if I want to browse comics, browse books, the groups are going to be ways that maybe I ask my students to work collaboratively. Uh, my favorite tab here though is lesson plans. I can find pre-made lesson plans by other teachers on Pixton in this tab. Um, so I'm going to choose the one relevant a little bit more to me, the fine and performing arts. Now there's not a lot um, in this section here. Uh, I can click you know, elementary school, middle school, high school. There's uh, three things pre-made here. Now these are comics that I can go ahead and choose. Um, let's go ahead and choose one that has a few more options. Let's do language arts. Now you'll be able to see they have quite a few in here. Um, let's do high school. Yeah, so they've got a, quite a few different comics, kind of pre-started, different assignments that you can borrow or use for your own class. Come back up here again. In this tab, there's also the educator community. This is where I can find other teachers, blogs, activities, 
um, that are going to, you know, maybe be inspirational to me, or maybe I want to use their lessons or follow them because I like what they're doing. Lots of fun stuff here. Now, if I want to make my own comic, I can come to this little edit tool here. Now, I've started one, so I can show you. I'm going to go ahead and keep working on this comic. Alright, so here you can see the comic that I've already started. I have not done much. I chose a character and I chose a setting. Uh, this is in the very basic comic uh, starter selection. So uh, some of the things that I would do right away is make a, make a title. Maybe it's mm, Beach Story. Something like that. Some of the things that I can do with this character then. Um, change their expression. Change their their actions, give them a dialogue, several different things. All right, so I've got this empty speech bubble up here. All I need to do is select it, and then I'm ready to type my story. Maybe uh, she thinks it's very hot here. Now I can move my text bubble around so I can link it to my excuse me. I have a little bit of a lag on my computer just because internet connection is not as great here. I can move my speech bubble around. I can link my speech bubble to the specific character that I need it to be linked to. Some of the fun things I can do with my character, I change their actions, change how they're standing, what they're doing, uh, I kind of liked how she was standing already, so I'm just going to leave her. I can change her expression, give her a different face. Maybe she's a little confused because it's so hot. Um, anything I want to do in here. Now, this is the basic setting. There are a little bit more advanced settings. I'm just going to show you basic tonight because that's maybe what I would start a student with anyways. I might want to create a second panel. Uh, so in my second panel... I can choose to keep the scene the same, change it, do something else. So here's my beach story. I'm going to go ahead and move on just for the sake of time so you can see a little bit more. Another thing I can do is create a character map. Now as an art teacher, I might use this as an artist map. Um, let the students use the character map as a way to uh, break down some different traits about their artists. I've already started one for Roy Lichtenstein from the pop art era. I'll just show you that really briefly. So I've already uh, added some traits here about him. Now he doesn't have red eyes. I haven't changed that yet. But some things I might have them write at different artists that they were related to. Maybe they're important works. We can change this up a little bit. Um, I'm going to pop back out of here though, say save for later. Let's go back to the main page. Well, you can kind of see. Start back up. Now, if I want to monitor my students, all I need to do is come here to student list. Come down, I have one student in my class, student BW. Now I can even see when they were last logged in as a student. I can click on them and go to their uh, profile, um, what they were working on. Um, if I wanted to put my students in groups, I can do that. I have one student, so it's a little difficult. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, back to our page here, I would be able to grade the students in here, look at their reports. That is something that I would need a full membership to do, so I'm not going to be able to show you that today. Um, but maybe some other things I would use Pixton for, uh, besides artist map and storyboarding, uh, would be um, some reflections on art history, maybe period pieces. It has so many options, and that's what I like so much about Pixton, is it really could be a tool for so many different things, as well as just being, uh, you know, very creative and very artistic in your uh, comic book creation. So that was Pixton. I hope that you give it a try.